Hello, my name is Ferrin Glenfield. I'm the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Ada, a diocese which covers counties Cavan, Leitrim, Sligo, Roscommon and Longford, and parts of Fermanagh, Donegal and Westmeath. I'm speaking to you from an old railway bridge over the River Erne in Cavan, not too far from my home. And I think you can see the new road bridge in the background. The COVID-19 crisis has been a bridge too far for so many people. It's disrupted our daily lives. It's devastated businesses. It's denied us the ability to meet together as families and for sporting occasions and also for church. And it's brought illness, fear and death to many doors. Our diocese is recording these Sunday services, which are available online, to act as a bridge. A bridge bringing scattered and isolated lives together. A bridge that we can come to God through Jesus Christ. And so can I invite you to join in our worship with the words of the hymn writer, O oh, worship the King, O oh, glorious above, O oh, gratefully sing his power and his love, our shield our defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned with splendor and girded with praise. Join in, enjoy, and God bless. Hello and welcome to this worship here this morning. This is St John's Church Longford. I'm Andrew McHugh and this is Iris Lindenning and hopefully we'll lead you in worship here this morning. Our grouping is vacant at the moment so we've no rector but when the lockdown eases we hope to welcome Reverend Simon Scott here. Although we're vacant and we're absent of a clergyman perhaps you may at home feel that you are absent from God at times too now during this lockdown but you're not. God revealed himself in so many ways and on this Trinity Sunday we remember he revealed himself to us through his Father, the Creator, through a human on earth, his Son Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit who lives and works through us each and every day, guiding us and helping us. So come, welcome into St John's, join us as we worship and praise God together and let's meet God. Each Sunday as we gather we come to worship God the Father. We come trusting God will speak to us. We come hoping God will surprise us. Each Sunday, as we gather, we seek to follow Jesus. We follow, believing Jesus will be with us. We follow, hoping Jesus will work through us. Each Sunday, as we gather, we lift our souls to God's Spirit. We open our hearts that the Spirit may fill us. We open our hands that we might be a gift to others. Let us join together in singing our opening hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
We live our lives tiptoeing around the facts that we often say words we should never have uttered. We do those things we wish we could take back. Yet, you reach out to take us by the hand, so we walk together in the garden of grace. Let us offer our hearts and our brokenness to our God, who offers us mercy in these moments. Join with me as we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Being mindful that our sins are forgiven, that we are perfect in the sight of God when we truly repent. Let us praise God. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name. And let's pray, praise the Lord by saying the eighth psalm together. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouth of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moons and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals, that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings, that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Last autumn, through faith missions, helped us around the diocese to reach out to others. And this morning, Georgina, from that mission, is going to bring the reading to us. Hi, I'm Georgina. I'm a missioner with Through Faith Missions. I spent a very, very happy uh, three weeks last September with you all in Ireland, working with local churches and seeing how God is moving in your communities. It was great. Our reading today is from John chapter 14 and it's verses 1 to 17. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really love me, you'll know my Father as well. 
From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even if I've, as I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father? The Father is in me. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it's the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. And they'll do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. And now. George Martin from True Faith Missions is going to tell us his story from outside his church. This is uh, George Martin speaking to you from uh, almost sunny England and in my natural environment. And as a matter of interest, if I just swing round, you can see the church next door to my house. And that's where, uh, when I was 13, I asked Jesus Christ into my life. The preacher was the Reverend John Stone and he challenged me and challenged us all and he said and pointed at us, is your name in the book of life? And I went home that night, got into bed and asked Jesus Christ into my life and I've never looked back on it. I don't know how people manage without. And coming to Ireland was the um, fulfilment of a dream because I've been coming to Ireland many, many times buying cattle in Dublin and Manute and Ashbourne and Six Mile Bridge and Kilcullen uh, and had a great time, met some wonderful Irish people and to be able to come back to Ireland and repay some of the enormous hospitality uh, I had then by telling people about Jesus Christ last uh, September in the gathering mission was uh, a, a wonderful experience for me. And I can just thoroughly recommend anyone to come, uh, come and ask Jesus Christ into their life. Um, the difference it made to me was that I've always got someone to talk to. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, never betrays a confidence. Uh, he forgives me. He guides me. And I have the great joy of knowing he loves me. And that is uh, worth more than anything. I had a court case some time ago. I knew I was innocent. Um, my barrister said to plead guilty because he said, you'll be found guilty. But I said, I'm not guilty. He said, well, it's up to you. You've got a 60% chance of losing this. Anyway, he left and uh, I had another barrister and he, um, I pleaded innocent. And after six days in court, including half a day in the witness box, the, uh, judge said mr martin you're innocent you're free to go and i couldn't speak for an hour for the emotion uh that welled up inside me uh, but during the court case i've been really calm uh, and i put that all down to almighty god because when i met the second barrister i said we're going to have a prayer before we start this meeting about the court case and i said lord jesus i just want anything that happens here to be to your glory and the barrister said to me, now, Mr. Martin, you're not going to say the Lord told me to do this, are you? I said, no, I shan't mention God again. And I didn't, but he was there all the time with me. Thank you very much for letting me come to Ireland. Bishop Ferran, thank you so much for your hospitality. And Tanya and Simon and all the team uh, where I stayed, it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. We sing hymn number 324. 
God, whose almighty word. Tim Hall is going to share with us from God's Word. It's great to be with you. I'm Tim Hall, the leader of Through Faith Missions. So enjoyed working with you. What a privilege uh, to be working together, speaking Jesus on the gathered in mission. And I trust things are continuing uh, to go well for you. I so remember driving around those lanes and meeting so many of you. It was a great time. So we're looking at John 14. A passage in the Bible that's very familiar to lots of us, although sadly it's familiar because it's used a lot in funerals. Uh, and that might be the case for you. You might look at this passage and, and remember a funeral, uh, which is a bit of a pity because actually this passage is far more uh, than just funerals. Let me explain. So I'm actually not very good at sport. Don't tell Ferran, but I, uh, sport, no, my, my school sport was to avoid sport. And I was jolly good at that. But just recently, my wife has taken to cycling up and down the roads and lanes of Wisbeach. Uh, and because I love her uh, and because she asked me to, uh, I've said I'll accompany her. So I have to get my bicycle out the shed and I follow her uh, at a very great distance as she whizzes off down the roads and the lanes. Some bits are frankly terrifying, those huge roads and big lorries. Some bits are glorious, the, the orchards and the sun of Wisbeach. Uh, and then some bits are just hard work, heavy peddling. But the best bit, the best bit of all is when you turn into Bothwalk Road, because that's where I live. When I turn into the road where I live and I get to my house uh, and I can put my bicycle back in the shed, I am home. And oh, that is glorious. You see, in John 14, actually, is not just about the homecoming, although that's in there. And it, Jesus makes some amazing and wonderful promises uh, about what happens at the end of life. But actually, John 14 is about the bit before that. It's about life itself. How do we make the most of these short hours that we have on Earth? We don't know how long or how short our time will be on Earth. We don't know whether it be filled with the glory or disaster, joy or triumph and a mixture of the whole lot. But the big question is, how do we make the most of those? 
And so there are three things, three things that we need to just have uh, an eye on in John 14. The first is this uh, promise by Jesus that he is the father and the father is him. Why is this so important? Well, when I became vicar of a certain parish, which I will not name, I went for a walk around the uh, parish, see what was what, went for a walk around the buildings. One of the uh, church halls uh, had had some problems with youth. There were um, a lot of barbed wire and CCTV cameras and uh, boards over windows and all that kind of things. And then there were notices, notices that said, God is watching you. God is watching you. You see, all of us have an image in our head of God. Uh, often it's an image that's been given to us uh, by uh, teaching uh, from our parents or from as we brought up as children. Um, and actually that image sticks. You see, if you think of God uh, as a heavenly policeman, if you think of him as the unjust judge, if you think of him as coming to find you and seek out your sin and destroy you, you've got a wrong picture of God. And of course, those pictures of God actually make a real difference uh, to the way that we behave and the way that, that uh, we react to God and are prepared to approach him. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. So almighty, all powerful, om all omniscient God also has the characteristics of Jesus that we know uh, and appreciate and value. The compassion, the kindness, the wisdom, the love. Uh, and of course, it's vice versa too, because a lot of the time we make Jesus out to be this uh, very weak um, character, all loving and, and nothing matters and, and all the rest. Of it. And of course, that's not true either. We have to get these things in balance. Who is God for us? Do we understand uh, his power and yet also understand his love? And that's for us uh, as well as those around us. Who is God? Uh, and then the second um, question that we find there is what can we do? Because there's an extraordinary statement, isn't there? Jesus says, you will do greater things than I. Greater things. How's that true? I mean, come on. Jesus, who uh, healed the sick, uh, who raised the dead, who caused the leper to be clean, who fed 5,000 who walked on water and calmed the storm. Jesus, who did all of these incredible things, is saying that we will do greater things. How can that be? And yet, of course, the clue is in there. The clue is in there because he says that I'm going to the Father, and because of going to the Father, you will do greater things. So what does he mean? He means that the atonement will be done. The cross will be finished. The resurrection will have happened, which means that we can offer heaven itself to people and accept it for ourselves. We can say we believe in Jesus and because we believe in Jesus, we will go to heaven at the end of our lives. And that is a promise that we can make to others. Now, just think for a second, Jesus reckons that that is a greater thing. So often we seek the other stuff. So often we look uh, for the healing uh, and for the feeding and for the miracles. Uh, and yes, that's right and proper, but do we actually recognize how important it is to accept the gift and to give the gift to others? The most important thing is this relationship with Jesus that will begin as soon as you say yes to him, it begins and it never finishes. So however long or short the time on earth is, you will be welcomed home once we've said yes to Jesus. That's why this gift is so important. That's why it's the greater gift. And then the third thing to pick out from John 14 uh, is this extraordinary thing that Jesus will do whatever we ask him to do. Ah, there's got to be a but, hasn't there? There must be a but in there. This is my grandfather. My grandfather uh, was a very old fashioned gentleman who, as we were growing up, was frankly terrifying. He saw children as a necessary evil. When you went to see him, there were places you did not go. There were noises that were not allowed to be made in certain areas. And if you had to approach him, if you had to ask him a question, you did so very, 
very carefully, having thought it through beforehand. Thankfully, I got to know him later on in life too. He was an extraordinary man who did amazing things in medicine. It's about relationship, isn't it? You see, we are uh, told that we can approach God and we can ask him anything. And that's absolutely true. But it's a relationship. So as we get to know God and love God, so we'll know the things that we can ask and shouldn't be asking. So we know that we can throw ourselves on the mercy of the God who knows the beginning from the end, who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Uh, and we can say, we believe that we need this. And we can recognise that that may indeed be what we want and what he'll give us. But he might do something completely different. And whatever it is that he does, it will ultimately be the best. The relationship is critical. Uh, and so it is that this passage, John 14, uh, is all about life. Life in all its fullness. You see, just pause for a moment and be completely mad. I recently had to buy a washing machine. OK, and you have to look at all these washing machines and you have to compare all these offers. And some give you a five year guarantee, uh, but you're not sure what that covers. Uh, others are cheaper and, and maybe maybe that's a better way to go. Um, and others offer you this and they offer you that. And it's a minefield. But here, here we're being offered something absolutely extraordinary. When we accept Jesus, we accept a, a manual about life itself. We accept 24 hour attention uh, from almighty God, all powerful God. We uh, accept a support network that's unrivaled, that's both human, because of course we're a family, we are connected by faith and therefore we support and uphold and encourage one another. So the support network is both human uh, and divine because we have the Holy Spirit in us and through us uh, and around us. 24 hours a day support network. We have a heavenly father who watches our back. And when it's all over, we have Jesus himself coming to take us home, home to heaven, where there is no more crying or mourning or pain to a glorious uh, new beginning, a new state of life. What an amazing thing. What an amazing gift that we have been offered. This is the gift that I accepted back in 1980. Three, uh, and, and if it's not something that you've accepted yet, please do that. Please accept Jesus. Do it now. It's the most amazing thing you will ever do. Uh, you'll never regret it. And actually, now is the time to do it because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. In fact, we don't know what this, what the next day will bring. So accept him now. Uh, and if you have accepted him like me, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you in heaven. And in the meantime, can I ask you, what are you doing with this amazing gift? What are you, how are you preparing to share it? Either you individually or in your churches. How are people going to be knowing about Jesus, about this amazing gift that's offered them? So often it seems as though we take this gift and we stick it under the tree and wait for Christmas. We need to be offering the gift of Jesus to everyone. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that today? How are you going to speak Jesus, live Jesus, be Jesus today? And so may the God of all peace fill you with his love and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, fill you now and bless you mightily. Amen. Let's join together in singing our next hymn. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed. be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I find in you. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away 
by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me, and bring me near, draw me to your side. Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The first prayers of intercession will be led by Daniel Holland from True Faith Missions, and the remaining prayers will be led by Iris. Well, hello everybody. I'm Dan, the Evangelist with True Faith Missions. Great to be with you again, <clears throat> albeit remotely. Let's pray together. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the nation of Ireland. Thank you for the, the beautiful green fields and rolling hills. Thank you for the warm-hearted people. Thank you for the farms and the schools and the factory and the industry. Lord Jesus, thank you for the mission that happened in autumn last year. Thank you for harvest. Thank you, Lord, for the way that Ireland blesses the nations with its produce and with its people. Lord, we do pray for your people, for your church in the nation of Ireland and in Cavan County at this time. We pray for Bishop Farron and all the, the wonderful vicars and deacons and, and Christians, Lord God, in the churches, in the parishes. I pray, Father God, for inventive and creative ideas to share the gospel in the in, in amongst the limitations and the challenges of lockdown and the virus and um, the restrictions that we all face. Help us, Lord, 
to discover for ourselves the reality that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not chained. There are always methods, there are always ways through which we can share this wonderful gospel that we, we, we speak, that we preach, that we own, that has saved us, Lord God, and can save other people. Lord, I pray that you bless the churches, um, you bless them to be a blessing at this time. Lord God, we pray that you keep the vicars safe, the congregations safe and well at this time, that they can continue to share the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, let there be a harvest. Let there be people touched in this time of lockdown by your spirit, by your word. Let there be Bibles taken off of shelves and dusted off and read. Let there be people who call out to you, who cry out to you in their loneliness, in their despair, in their pain, in their suffering, even in their sick beds or even death beds, Lord God. We pray that these people will cry out to you and the gospel will come. Lord, we thank you that, that the Bible is so readily available. I pray that it will be available in hospitals, it will be available in, 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 in surgeries, it will be available across the country, that people will, who are looking will be able to find you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that when this lockdown is over, that your church, your glorious bride, will be ready, will be absolutely ready uh, and willing to share the gospel with those who have so many questions that need answers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We glorify you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. The mystery of God, creator, redeemer and sanctifier all at once, is beyond our human understanding, yet closer to us than breathing. Called by the great God we worship, let us pray fervently for the church and for the world. We bring before you, O God, the needs of the church in its weakness and its potential. Revive and refresh us. Teach and direct us. Inspire all who preach, teach and gossip the good news. And uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, the particular problems of our age and our culture. Renew in us a commitment to community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Protect the vulnerable and sensitize the hearts of all who have become anaesthetized by images of violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, the nurturing of our children and young people in homes and parenting, schools and teaching, in the expectations, pressures and dangers, in the hopes and possibilities for good, during these times, so much has changed in family life. And so we pray for parents with newborn children. We pray for parents with new expectations of having to teach their children. We pray for parents as they seek to bring up their children in the Christian faith without being able to bring them to church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, the hungry and malnourished, the greedy and complacent, those who are ill and those who care for them, the unhappy and those who comfort them, all who are undergoing surgery or painful treatment, and all who have no one to turn to. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And finally, we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers by thinking of all our friends and our families who we haven't seen in a while, of those people in our churches who we haven't seen, and of all the Christians across of Ireland. And so let's say together the grace, thinking about all of those people. The grace, the grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 480. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name.
Now we'll join together in the closing diocesan 2020 prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to catch your vision for these dioceses and for our parish. But to catch your vision, we first need to listen to you. Too often, we leave you out. Forgive us. Help, Help us to, to catch, catch a sense of where your spirit, spirit is leading. Give us courage to love and serve you. Give us boldness to proclaim Christ faithfully and to build your kingdom. Lord, come to us. Our door is open. Amen. Created and called to be faithful stewards, we are sent forth by our God. We will take all that is good to places of brokenness, all that is beautiful to those who live in despair. Called and commissioned to be faithful disciples, we are sent forth by Christ, word of hope. We follow Jesus to every place he would lead us, to every person who will bless us. Called and filled with the very breath of peace, we are sent forth by the Spirit, God's grace. We will join the Spirit in bringing life where there is fear, in offering love where hate seeks to take hold. And may the peace of creation's imagination, the peace of grace's word, and the peace of hope's spirit and the deep, deep peace of God and community, holy in one, be with us this day and for always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.